Service requires what? If you want to serve, what is the most important thing to have when you want to serve? So many are going to say love. I have to have love, then that time I can serve. We put a big question mark to that word love. Because it is the most... Mm, how shall I put this delicately? The most abused word in the English language for the past hundred years or more. And that is a word that so many who are the enemies of Huck that they are using. They are using that word love to be opposed to Huck, truth, to say that love is higher than truth. But we say what kind of love? Love, what makes me feel good? What makes me feel right? If I feel right, how can it be wrong? That is not love, that is ego. Because there is a creator of love. We did not create love. If that creator has created love, he has defined what that love is. You cannot put your own spin on it. Allah is Wadud. Al Wadud. But He's the creator of Wadud. Anyone can say, oh, I believe in God, I believe in Allah, so I think love is like this, love is like that. No, you cannot too. Because he has given the full message and the complete message after uh, more than thousands of years, the message that was opening up, blooming like a rose for thousands of years through 124,000 prophets from Adam alayhi salam to Isa alayhi salam 124,000 prophets and that message was blooming and the complete message came to the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam the complete message so it is not what you think the message is it is what the owner and the creator of that message gave to his Beloved messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. And that messenger, he has passed. Physically, he has passed from this world. Spiritually, he is Hazir and Nazir, of course. But physically, he has left his inher inheritors, the waris. And these are the ones that we call the shaykhs, the awliyaullah. And our waris, our the one that we follow who is an inheritor of the Prophet والسلام, is Sahib al Sayf. Shaykh Abdul Qan Kibusiya Rabbani. And it was given that authority and that power from Sultan al Awliya. From the day of promises until Yawm al Qiyamah, until beyond. He has given it. So now, The definition of love is not according to you or me or them or Hollywood or music or magazines or books or time or country or culture or philosophy. The definition of that love is held by the owner of that love, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he passes it only to those ones that he has given the permission and the authority. Alhamdulillah, we're under one of those ones. Shaykh Abdul Qan Kibrisi Arabani. So what is that love? If the whole world says we are flying, especially in this second Jahiliya, Ahir Zaman, we say we walk. If the whole world says we are crawling, we say we fly. If the whole world says it's black, we say it's white. If the whole world says it's white, we say it's black. Because this is what? 
second Jahiliya, Ahil Zaman, the time of Dajjal. So if you have certain ideas, no matter what group you call yourself, and you are in line with the majority of this system of Dajjal, good luck to you. We are not. Because we are far away. We try to be very far away from that. Don't sleep. So what is his love now? <laughs> it's simple. They've been talking about it for thousands of years. Oh, other belief systems, they've been talking about it for thousands of years. What love is? Love is this, love is that. The creator of love has given that to the Holy Prophet, his beloved one. And his beloved one, Sayyidina al-Awalul Lahirin, saying to us what that love is. Love to what? Love to truth, love to him, love to Allah. I'm not talking about love to dunya. I'm not talking about man or woman love. I'm not talking about love of your desires. I'm talking about love that you're going to return to the creator of love. That whatever he has given you, you return it back to him because he is the owner, not you. You cannot take that love. You have to return it. It doesn't belong to you. And what did the Holy Prophet والسلام, say when one of, his, one of his companions, one person came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you. Did he say, Tamam, it is enough. It is enough to put you in safety. Did he say that? This hadith, did he say that in this hadith? He did not. And this hadith, Shah Effendi has quoted so many times. And we're continuing to take what is necessary for us to wake up to this. So the man said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you. And the Prophet said, He didn't say, Subhanallah, you are going to reach to high stations, high maqams. He did not say anything of that. He said, prepare yourself for hardship. If you love me, prepare yourself for hardship. Is this an isolated incident in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ when somebody loves the Prophet and he has to go through hardship? This is not, this is not an isolated incident. This is the norm. <laughs> all those who loved the Prophet ﷺ during his lifetime, they all went through severe tests and hardship. Tabi'ins went through that severe test and hardship. All those who love truth up till Yawm Qiyamah, their lives will be filled with tests and hardship to prove that love. Because they love. The Holy Prophet says, prepare yourself for hardship. Now with that love, all those hardship, it will be very easy. All that hardship, it will make us strong. All that hardship is going to give us more faith and more love. It is not the opposite. Dunya is thinking hardship is bad. No hardship is good. We've come to that point now in this Ahir Zaman. Black is white and white is black. If they're saying that, you have to think the opposite. Especially something that they say officially. Now that hardship, what did the khutbah that we are mentioning today. It is the year of sadness, isn't it? 1400 years ago, in these times, in this time of Rajab, we have to study what? The Sirah. It is important to learn about our history. Oh, why you have to learn? Why you have to study? Love is enough. Did anyone just through love of, say, law, they become a lawyer? They don't have to go through school? I love to become a dentist. Very good. You love, I give you diploma. You can become a dentist. Ever it happened in this world? You love and you have to go through so much hardship, isn't it? Years. 
there's no guarantee that you're going to pass, too. If you don't have enough discipline that you put into that study, no matter how much you love, you will fail. So now, those ones who went through the tests, how did they go through the test? How did they pass through the test? Just through love. The same ones who said, we love you, Ya Hussein. We give our lives to you, Ya Hussein. We love you, we love you, we love you. Yet those group of people, they are not the same group of people who are in Medina, who are in Mecca. They did not go through that test. They did not have that discipline with that proclamation of love. The night time falls. They abandoned and betrayed Hazrati Hussein. But they are the first ones to say, we love you. So the love comes with hardship, comes with tests. How are you going to pass your test if you don't study? How are you going to pass your test if you don't have discipline? As far as I remember, the whole teachings of this tariqat, it is based on fighting against your ego. It is not based on loving your ego. Those who wish to go somewhere, those whose role models are the sahibai kiram, these tabi'ins, our sheikhs who went through hardship, they are all role models. Those who look to the hadith where the man says, I love you, Prophet says, prepare yourself for hardship. Those who hold on to the ayat of the quran Karim that says, you mean us not to test you. Oh, those of you thinking you're going to go to the same high stations, do you think that we're not going to test you? Do you think that we don't mean to test you? Oh, believers, again and again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in the quran Karim that he's going to test the believers. Those of us who are holding on to that, those are our role models. In order to pass that test, those hardships, we have to have the discipline. You think you have love. Love is not a warm, fuzzy feeling. Love is not just you feel so good inside, then with a little prick of the uh, needle, everything's going to burst. Love is when you are getting knocked from wall to wall. Love is when you're going to be scrubbed with a brillo. Love is when you are willing to take that knife and to sacrifice your ego to make the ultimate qurban, the ego to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. is not to say, I love you, my ego, I love everyone. Whole world, whole Dajjalic world is talking about love. We're not going to talk about love. Because if you want to talk about love, no one falls into that category. Like what we said before, there's shariat and there's tariqat. There's a shariat of tariqat. When you talk about ashk, there's a shariat of ashk and there's a tariqat of ashk too. You can never run away from shariat. It is a law. It is a law. You can never run away from it. Oh, I'm no longer in shariat, I'm in tariqat. There's a shariat in tariqat. I'm no longer in tariqat. I mean, so many people, they have so many different terms for this. Higher you go, there is also a shariat for that. You can never run from it. And the shariat of love, who can afford to do that? A discipline for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the Holy Prophet والسلام, is the shariat that contains the love and it contains the haq. 
without that container, without that protection, without the discipline, everything will go to pieces. In tarikat, in the dergahs, the most important thing is adab, 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 yahoo, adab, yahoo, adab, yahoo. The uh, shaitan. Some groups, they love shaitan, astaghfirullah. They're saying he is the example of the ultimate lover of Allah, right? They're saying, I don't, shaitan refused to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam because he loves Allah so much. He loves Allah so much, he cannot give respect or love to anything else except for Allah. And he's even willing to sacrifice that love for Allah to punish him because his love was so great. So much philosophy happening. MashaAllah. Isn't that what it is? So shaitan had so much knowledge, he had so much love, but he lost his manners. Did that love save him? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, oh, you know what? You slip, it's okay. You love me, I know you make that mistake, you love me. And I forgive you, it's okay. Allah did not say that. The shaitan is being punished up till today. It has not even started his real punishment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving, saying, I will forgive you, I'm the most forgiving. Like what shaitan asked Musa alayhi salam when he was on his way to the mountain of Tur. And shaitan saying, Ya Musa, your Lord is not just hasha astaghfirullah. Musa alayhi salam says, why are you saying that? You are malun. And shaitan says, because I did wrong. Adam alayhi salam, Adam, he never is going to say Adam alayhi salam. Adam did wrong. Allah told me to do and I didn't. Allah told him, don't do and he did. But Allah forgave him, Allah did not forgive me. Musa alayhi salam was caught for a second. He says, wait, I will ask our Lord and I will give you an answer. He went up and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then say, Ya Musa, say to me, this is known to you, Ya Rabbi. This is what shaitan said. He says, Ya Musa, you are worried because of that? It is so easy. Give him an answer. He says, your Lord is most just. Tell him I will forgive him. <coughs> Instantly, he knows where the grave of Adam alayhi salam is. Go to his grave. And this is another proof to those ones who hate us to go to the graves of prophets and to saints. Allah is giving order to shaitan, meaning there is a rahmat for shaitan to get at Adam alayhi salam's grave. You think there's no rahmat for us? Say to him, you know where Adam alayhi salam is? Go to his grave. Do what you were supposed to do on that day, which is to make one sajda to him. Tell him, go to Adam alayhi salam's grave, make one sajda, I will forgive him. Your Lord is most just. Musa alayhi salam went down, said to shaitan, Easy. My Lord is most just. He is saying, go to Adam alayhi salam's grave and make one sajda. He will forgive you everything. Your sin at that time and all your sins that you have committed until this moment. What did shaitan say? He said, I did not make sajda to him when he was alive. Now he wants me to make sajda to him, to his dry bones. Never I'm going to do it. He became more shaitan. So it is not the mercy of Allah, it is not the love of Allah that is not causing the man to reflect that. It is because he put veils in front of him. 
arrogance and stubbornness and anger, the ego that he puts. So shaitan had so much love. But he lost his manners. Manners is the most important thing in tariqat. Not your ilm, isn't it? Not even a love. Because everything has to have proof. You cannot make a claim without giving a proof. If you make a claim without giving a proof, if you make a claim and there's no proof, you'll be called a what? A liar. And the Sahabi asked Prophet Ya Rasulullah, can a believer be weak? I'm paraphrasing that hadith. Yes. Can a believer make adultery? He says, yes. Can a believer lie? He says, no. A believer can never lie. If you say something and you cannot back it up, you have no proof, you are a liar. So now, the whole world is a liar. We want to keep our manners. And the only way to keep our manners is to have discipline. It is impossible otherwise. The whole fight against to our ego, the whole Jihad al-Akbar, it is to discipline ourselves. Last I'll check, our tariqat is based on that, isn't it? Fighting against our ego, fighting against dunya, fighting against shaitan, fighting against hawa, isn't it? Fighting against our anger, our stubbornness, our pride, our envy, isn't it? Where is the love in all of this? I didn't hear nothing. Suddenly everyone is talking about love. Oh, maybe that's all that they can talk about and they can give through speech. Of course, if people, it is better for them to like and to say that they love awliya. Anybody who does that, there is some safety to them. Of course we know that. An unbeliever who looks at our sheikh with love and say, you look very nice wearing that turban and that jubba. The face is lighting with that faith for a split second. That one, inshallah, has more... Uh, Shafat, then somebody who is worshipping, calling himself a Muslim, but is hating the friends of Allah. Definitely. But you cannot say now, the one who says that one word to an early Allah has more safety or has more value or has equal value to the ones that their whole lives they are fighting against their ego for the love of that awliya Allah. That they're giving up this dunya and this hawa for the love of that awliya Allah. That their ego is getting knocked wall to wall for the love of that awliya Allah. You cannot put the same thing together. That is unjust. Even amongst the Sahabi Kiram, there are different stations for every Sahabi. You cannot say they are all the same. That is unjust. We want to become servants. I don't care for titles, love this or that, lover or uh, ashk or this. And we want to serve. How are we going to serve? To have discipline to serve. You don't have discipline, you cannot serve. You cannot. That time you'll be doing things according to your ego. I'll be happy if they say, my servant, come. That is our maqsud, for them to be happy with us, with our service. The love, as Holy Prophet Wasallam says, when that sahabi came and said, I love you, Ya Rasulullah, he said, if you love me, prepare yourself for hardship. This is the second jahiliya, worse than the first jahiliya. We should prepare ourselves for that hardship. <laughs>
that is coming. If we are not trading, putting our ego down to go through that hardship now, impossible we'll be able to do that in the future. We have not been hit by hardship yet. But believe me, this whole world is going through hardship right now. We are just being protected in pockets here and there. Don't think this whole world is like America or England or majority of this world is in severe hardship and oppression. If in ease, we don't have discipline. Or those who say discipline is not important. Do you think that time in hardship, you will have that discipline? And you need that discipline in hardship. May Allah keep us on the straight way you know, to get deviated. The way of Sahib al Saif, the way of Sultan al Awliya through him, it is enough for us. May Allah forgive me. And bless all of you. May Allah raise their stations higher and higher. Al Fatiha. Amen.